Are, are you a songwriter? Are, are you looking to turn your songwriting passion into a full-time gig? Whether you are just at the start of your songwriting journey or a seasoned industry professional, this show is made for you. Welcome to The Songwriter Show, bringing together songwriting news, interviews, and community. Now, welcome your host, Sorantos. Thank you so much for tuning in, and welcome back to The Songwriter Show right here on Reality Radio 101. I'm your host, Sorantos. I'm a solo music artist who's been writing lyrics for as long as I can remember. Words mean the world to me, and that's why I'm thrilled to host this show for you every Tuesday evening. I believe that every song is a story. Tonight, we have Justin Haar. He founded and developed the dating and social app Eden, and his mission was to bring the world closer together. Eden allows people to connect by many identities, including sexuality and gender. He believes technology exists to help us find the one and thinks he can pull it off. Before creating Eden on his own, Justin built video software for NBC Universal's iOS and TVOS apps, dealership and consumer iOS apps for global automotive companies, and used to manage a team for the New York Post apps. His expertise includes iOS, TVOS development, and a focus on audio, video, and general media technologies. And now, welcome this week's special guest. Welcome to the show. How you doing, Justin? Good, Sorantos. I'm good. Thanks for having me. You're welcome. So people might not know this, but I am at heart a techie and a nerd. So it's kind of cool sometimes to have people on the show that are not necessarily songwriters, but you know, you're creative too. You've built apps, and I think that's a fascinating thing to do, especially in today's world, right? Yeah, totally. Um, yeah, it's it's cool. It's it's. I'm grateful to be able to do it in the first place you know there's a lot of people that i think try to do it but they can't you know so uh, i'm pretty blessed in regard to you know just being able to like mentally and intellectually put you know build apps and, and and use my brain to build software so you know it's it's cool to be able to do it absolutely so when did you start coding when did you start creating things right around when i was like 25 so about like eight years ago 33 now um yeah, before that, you know, I wasn't I I didn't I didn't go to school for computer science or coding. I was an economics major. I didn't I didn't really touch a piece of code up until I was 25. So, you know, it's been it's been a minute or two, but you know, since I started. Um I've had a couple of jobs over the years and uh you know, it's 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 cool. It's it's just it's cool that how the you know, the journey plays itself out, you know, starting from not knowing anything to where I am now, you know, managing teams, you know, it's it's a, a complete, you know, 180 in terms of what I was doing when I first started. Um, so you know, it's 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 an amazing journey. And everyone's journey is different. You know, some people, you know, stay within their expertise. You know, I, I stayed kind of within iOS and TVOS and sort of like the Apple ecosystem and, and building applications for for Apple products. Um, but some people like to do many different things, like to do, you know, back end, they like to do, you know, apps, they like to do websites, you know, it just depends on, you know, what kind of what your interests are. Yeah. And tell us a little bit about before we dive into your thing, what do you think about the world of music? What do you think about Spotify, Apple Music, any trends that you see that are worrisome or anything that you think is game changing? Um. I mean, I feel like there's a lot of competition when it comes to getting, you know, subscriptions and subscribers to any of these, you know, music streaming apps. But, um, I, you know, I, I, I don't I don't know. I don't know exactly if there's anything like worrisome. I think, you know, these platforms, I think nowadays it's it's more difficult and more expensive and, and, and time consuming and a lot more effort required to for any artist to get to get out there and get known. Um, I don't know if it's getting harder because, you know, I'm not an artist and I don't really know too much about the music industry, but, you know, it's, I feel like for the average artist, it's, it, it, you're, you're in a very saturated, you know, uh, platform, you know, now, not only with Spotify, but, you know, with all these different types of, you know, streaming music, streaming platforms. So, um, I don't know. And let's be honest, the, your world, whether it's games, whether it's, any kind of iOS app, I mean, that's really competitive too, right? Yeah. Kind of similar in a way. Very, very. You know, marketing, you know, it's one thing to build, you know, an app or it's one thing to make a song, but to market it and to, you know, make a business around around it is two, you know, totally separate things. You know, it's it's, it's night and day when it comes to how related they are. 
So, you know, it's one thing, you know, learning how to build apps, but marketing and, and, and you know, creating a business and a business model around, you know, your, your work or your, your, your artistic creations, your apps, your songs, your whatever it is, it's, uh, it's not easy. It's not easy, you know, especially with the AI tools out these days and all the automation tools, you know, some of it can be convenient. Some of it can, can be, you know, make your life a lot easier and cheaper, but still you are, you know, among, all, all, you know, everyone else, you know, to, to get the word out about your products, whether it's on social media or, you know, other types of channels. So it's, it's, it's still, you know, it's still, I feel like a difficult space. Yeah, no, I completely agree with you. What is the typical week like for you? Typical week. So yeah, it's a good question. You know, this past year I've been trying to, I've been trying to figure out a marketing strategy with Eden. So this, this past year is the first year I've been working on it full time. And so I've narrowed it down, you know, I've done, you know, I've done testing of like social media testing, organic, you know, content, influencer content. Um, and, you know, nothing really provides like a, a spike in, you know, usership and downloads as as I would expect it to unless you're spending, you know, what people have told me like, you know, 10,000 plus 5,000 plus dollars a month on marketing. You know, a lot of these agencies tell me they're they're you know, good, you know, good luck basically. So I've car I, I'm trying this, this PR, um, uh, strategy to see if PR can, can do anything for, for me and the brand and, and not only the brand, but also creating a personal brand for myself. So a lot of the, the week, right. You know, my weeks right now are, um, you know, pitching PR, you know, you know, sending out PR pitches. I have two publicists right now, you know, one's doing more traditional media, one's doing, um, more video and audio media, you know, podcasts and TV and, you know, shows and, you know, that, that, uh, that type, those type of channels. So, uh, you know, it's about really, you know, working together on that, you know, I'm tweaking the app, I'm adding, you know, different features to the app. I'm, I'm adding new features every day or tweaking the app, fixing, fixing things. Um, but you know, I'm really mostly focused on, you know, marketing and specifically like this PR strategy and how I'm like going to develop a personal brand around around Eden. Okay. And tell us a little bit about when you look at the creative space, right? You're doing your apps. We do music. We've had some book authors on here. What do you think is the biggest challenge that everybody faces? Biggest challenge? Um, I think it's about honing in on your story and like sort of your why and why you're doing what you're doing and to be able to figure that out and be able to ha and be able to figure out how that connects with your audience. And then once you figure that out, where and what channels and what mediums do you use to connect with your audience? I think, you know, people build stuff, but they haven't really figured out like why they're building it in the first place and what the, you know, the personal connection is to to what you're building so uh, i think you know that's one of the biggest challenges for me is you know how to pitch and tell and connect with my audience you know why i built it in the first place um and so, you know some of which is is more personal than i'd like to ad admit and and publicize but um it's really about creating a story around you know why you're doing what you're doing do you think sometimes people run off creating things and don't really look at what they're creating and why they're creating it? Yeah. I, th I mean, I, I'm trying to think of an example, but yeah, I mean, I think people are, you know, especially in such a digital and automated world, everyone's trying to figure out, you know, what their thing is and, you know, what they're passionate about working on, what problems they want to solve. And, you know, you really got to think about, um, you know, what, what, you know, really bugs you at night, what really, you know, keeps you up at night and, you know, makes you lose sleep. Well, what problem do you want to, you know, focus on and, and give back to, you know, society and how are you really realistically going to execute that, that plan of, of, of doing something you're passionate about and helping people out and doing something that you think will, will benefit people. Um, so there's, you know, there's a lot of moving parts that I think people underestimate, in the beginning that I think they need to focus on more in the beginning, you know, and have a plan on, on what they want to do. Yeah. And let's be honest, some, some problems aren't really a problem and don't need a solution. And I think sometimes people will come up with something that's unique or a great smooth technical marvel, but it doesn't ever find a home because it's either not the right price point or it's just not really necessary. 
Yeah, no, there's tons of overhyped technologies that never made it. You know, I actually wrote a paper on one in college about the Segway. Yeah. I mean, what a what a beautiful disaster of a product <laughs> that that was so overhyped. I mean, it, believe it or not, this guy thought that the Segway was going to be in cities everywhere. Like everyone was just going to be running around on Segways or riding around on Segways. I mean, it was so overhyped. Um, I mean, you can arguably say the same thing for the metaverse. I mean, you know, Zuckerberg thinks that the metaverse and this whole digital reality was going to be a thing. And look, look what AI just did and just completely ripped that, you know, uh, plan, um, you know, at a, at a commission, I guess. But, um, yeah, you know, it's it, people also, I think one of the things that people don't realize that people want to rush things. People, you don't like, I, I wanted to, when I first started doing this full time a year ago, I was like ready to go. I was ready to market this thing. I was ready to go on social media and I was, you know, ready to partner with influencers. I was like, just ready to just fire on all pistons. And then all of a sudden you, the war in Ukraine happens and I'm like, Oh my God, I can't market this thing right now. Like, you know, it's just the, the war is like all over the news. And so there's no way that I felt like I was going to be able to, you know, realistically kind of cost effectively and efficiently market what I was doing. And, you know, just because not only the news being taken over by the war in Ukraine, but just people's just mindset of, of what's going on in the world, I feel like just wasn't there when it comes to, you know, a dating app, quote unquote, you know, people discovery app like Eden. So, you know, I think people need to realize it's okay not to rush. It's okay to wait. You know, timing in business is probably one of the most underrated aspects in business that nobody talks about. So it's okay to take your time. It's okay to wait, wait three, six, you know, you know, 12 months to, to execute whatever you're doing. So that's kind of what I'm doing now. You know, I've waited, I've done trial and error. I've, I've tried different things, tested, tested different things. And to be, you know, you know, quite frankly, I'm still kind of doing that. So yeah. I think that's what it's all about, right? Is sometimes you have to pivot, but sometimes you just have to get the story out there, see how people react to it before you pivot. Right, right, exactly. So do you have any exciting changes to Eden or any of these things you're doing in the next year that people should kind of anticipate? Well, you know, I, just to go through in a nutshell, Eden allows you to, you know, find people without swiping. So there's no swiping involved. You can talk to anybody. You can find people by sexuality and gender. You know, it's location based. Um, you can change your location. Um, there's, it, Eden has the first two way filtering. So you can also you can filter for people who are also filtering for you. So it's like the first two way algorithm instead of just filtering for people that are set in your filters. Um so that, that's kind of one of the cool, like, first of its kind feature that I have in there. There's the app. There's the built-in Apple Music Player. So you can post songs to your profile um, so people can discover what, uh, you know, songs you like in your profile. Um, Tinder has something like that. And I think maybe Bumble, too, where you can, like, add, like, like your anthem, like, different songs that you like. So this is kind of similar, but it's an unlimited amount of songs you can put in your profile. You can play back music. And one of the coolest features uh, that I put in, because I loved remixes growing up, is the ability to change the playback rate of uh, songs. So you can speed up songs, slow down songs. And, and, and truthfully, it actually sounds pretty good. Some songs actually sound incredible to the point where, like, I get the goosebumps. So it's pretty cool to, to be able to just play around with songs and, and change the speed. Um, and then one thing I'm working on is a local deals feature. So people will be able to find local deals in their community. So it can be anything from restaurants to events to concerts to discounts or staycations, anything of that nature. It's sort of like another way to bring the world closer together by, you know, investing in, you know, growing local communities. So if you could be in a room with any musician dead or alive, who'd you pick? And you can't say me, by the way. Oh my God! Well, you, obviously you, but oh man, who would? Mm, that's a good question. I mean, Michael Jackson. I mean, I, I you know, I'm I was always into like pop music, the hip hop, the R and B, you know, genres of the world, and I feel like he kind of covered a lot of that in his music. So I, I feel like that'd be nice to maybe, you know, do a dance off of him. That's right. <laughs> yep, with the white glove and everything. Yep. Nope. Hi. I'm a big Michael fan too. Not his personal life, but his music, absolutely. Right. So what advice would you give to a beginner who's getting out in your industry that 
doesn't know what to expect. Let's just say he's coding a game or an app. What advice would you give them? Yeah, you know, I do it because you're you you're passionate about doing it and that you like building cool things and you like using your brain. Um, I wouldn't go into it to be like this unicorn startup founder. You know, don't 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 think that way because there's absolutely zero guarantees that that's going to happen and the likelihood of that happening is very small. So. Um, don't be afraid to, to try, you know, I, I started and I didn't know a thing about code. I didn't know what a, you know, a property was or a class was, or, you know, I had to build an app. I was like, you know, this is like hieroglyphics to me. So, you know, don't be afraid if you're decent at math or decent in language, you, you'll probably be fine because software is really just language. It's, it's basic algebra and just another language. And, that, and that's about it. It's, it's not as comp. I don't think it's as complicated as people think it is. You know, building, you know, an app, a game app is definitely more difficult than like just a regular like app that, you know, presents, you know, you know, information or, or music. But um, don't be afraid. It's it's OK to, you know, to get confused. My first two years was probably my hardest because it's the first, you know, that's when you really start, you know, breaking things. You don't you don't know what things mean and you don't know why things aren't working. And so after about two years, you really start to get the hang of it. And a lot of things become, you know, so, you know, of similar patterns. So try it. It's, it's It can be a lot of fun. Okay, cool. Tell us a little bit about, I was going to ask you a little bit about the education training required for your field, but you kind of touched on a little bit, and I guess it's not always required, but can you touch base about that? Yeah, I mean, there, you, you got companies like Google hiring people out of high school. I mean, that's that's happening. So don't think you need a, a, a formal education to to be you know uh, a software engineer um in, a, in any company i mean it depends obviously i think you know if if some roles require specialists to you know you know some some roles require you know phds or master's degrees in in your field to be able to you know do that role but no i mean you know you have people all the way you know in high school getting roles um so, you know, I, I personally took a boot camp, a, a hands-on boot camp, and this was back in 2015. Um, there were courses on coding, but I, I just felt like I needed a little bit more hands-on uh, experience. Um, that's just the way I learn. As you know, it's just different, you know, for everybody. But um, it's there are a lot of success stories. You know, a lot of the people I've worked with were former boot camp people or they took, you know, you know, post-grad courses, you know, in their day. And they're now they're like senior vice president or executive vice president, you know, of engineering groups. You know, these people have done very well in their careers. So it really, really is possible to, to get in the field no matter who you are. That's very cool. Do you think there are certain skills or personal attributes that are most important to being successful in your field, in music, in writing, in anything? Yeah, I mean... You know, communication is definitely one of the biggest things. You don't have to be the smartest person in the world, and you don't have to know all the all the right answers. You don't have to have all the um, knowledge base of whatever you're doing. But if you can communicate very well, you can communicate that you don't know something. That's better than communicating the wrong thing. You know, it's, it can be very dangerous in, in a problem solving or thought process. So, you know, communication skills. I think that applies to anything you do. Um, you know, it's not just software. It's it's any I think field that you're in. Um, so that's that, um, be open-minded, um, be open-minded about your ideas, be open-minded about other people's ideas. The idea is to work together to come up with the best solution, no matter, you know, who, who has better training or who has more experience, you know, everyone's perspective is different, unique. So, you know, software is really a collaborative, uh, environment. And so the idea is to, for all you know, opinions and perspectives to be put on the table and to come up together with the best solution. So that's kind of like the mindset I think people should have when they're they're going into like a software route or really any route, you know, work together, work as a team, don't work, don't try to outshine everybody. You know, it's it's really a group effort. Tell us about your favorite song of the last decade. Favorite song of the last decade. Wow. Oh, my God. <laughs> I mean, I, I, I like songs and add songs to my playlists, you know, re, you know, recently, you know, I, I but last decade, <laughs> oh my God. Or how about all time? All time. Well, should I, I mean, I have that song that I mentioned in, you know, what I sent you. Should I just say that? Sure. So what I was going through, so I, I, 
when I was going through chemotherapy when I was 13, my like theme song to like feel better about myself and, and sort of like make me happy was uh, Christina Aguilera's uh, Beautiful. Um, not only because it just made me like really, it was really uplifting and it just made me feel like, you know, I was still amazing and beautiful, but also had like queer stories and characters in her music video. So I was like, wow, this is like an all in one great song for me right now because, you know, that I was still, I started to struggle with, you know, my sexuality and just being, you know, sick for about a year at, at age 13. So beautiful by Christina Aguilera was like beautiful for me at the time. So it's awesome. Yeah. That's really cool. I want to thank you so much for being on the show tonight. It was an absolute blast, and it was kind of cool to have something different on. Yeah, this was fun. Thanks, Rontos. You're welcome. So to any listeners out there, thank you so much for spending a little bit of your precious time with the two of us. We both hope your unique story gets heard around the world. My name is Sorantos. Please join me every Tuesday night to hear other amazing artists and people share their fascinating behind-the-scenes stories right here at the Songwriter Show on Reality Radio 101. Have a great night, everybody. I love you guys. for listening to the songwriter show to keep the momentum going head over to www.songwritershow.com and join our free music community of artists songwriters and producers that's www.songwritershow.com